Hello, it is the first couple days of February, the happiest month of the year for me at least. I've had a couple people reach out to me asking how I make my collages into the digital form. I've talked a lot about how I make my art, but I haven't talked a lot about my post-production with my art. Now that you've decided to make a website or maybe post your pictures online of your art, it's time to figure out how you're going to take it from the real world to online. Let me take you through my process of how I go from paper to digital. Also, if this is your first time landing on my channel, I just want to say hi, my name is Leah. I'm a collage artist and I work with vintage magazines. I'm hoping to teach artists the skills they need to start their own art business. Now, if we take a look at my Instagram, you can see these shots are very clean and they look like definitely not just an overhead view with my camera. That's because that's true. I actually use a scanner instead of a camera for these pictures. Go grab all the pieces that you want to scan. I try to get everything together that I've done over a month or two and then scan them all together at the same time. Scanning takes a while and it takes a while to set up as well, so I just like to do as many as I can at once. I'm not going to give you education on which scanner I think you should buy. I think that this is a personal preference thing and also my scanner I got super lucky with. My neighbors had put a printer to the curb that said it was free and I took it in and the printer part didn't end up working. I ended up with this massive printer that had a huge scanning bed that I never thought that I would use uh, but I actually use that on it it's a brother printer I don't think the brand matters that much to be honest I think that you can find something great in every brand my priority was just having one that was as big as possible DPI is dots per inch and this just means that you'll have a higher quality file in the end when scanning you're going to want to do at least 300 DPI if you're a collage artist like me stop with the glue right now before gluing is always the best time to scan this means that you won't get any bubbles if you do run into a mistake and you can scan each piece individually so that if you ever want to scale up your work or print it and then reuse those pieces again, you can. There's a lot of different photo editing software but I stick with Photoshop just because I have a graphic design background. I'm pretty sure Adobe just launched a Adobe Express and it's going to be an online platform that helps you remove backgrounds from photos. I know that Canva has a version as well, like a premium version. What I'm trying to say is that there's other options and other programs that will do the exact same thing if Photoshop is either too expensive. I know it's ridiculously expensive. Now I'll show you this process using my first piece from Fabrilage with the prompt fish. I'm going to scan in all these pieces individually. This piece was much smaller than some, so I was able to scan in all the pieces in one file. After I've scanned all the pieces, I go into my scan folder that I've created and grab the piece I'm looking for. I then right click and open it in Photoshop. Before jumping in fully, I'll go in and enhance the colors a little bit. So if the color doesn't look the same way it does in person, for example, this green wasn't exactly the same color that I like to see in person, I've altered it a little bit. Same with the goldfish, they weren't exactly that bright orange that they looked like in the photo, so I'm taking them quickly and just adding a little bit more orange. I also like to adjust the contrast on black and white images, I just find sometimes they come out a little bit more muddier in color than they do in real life. But these are all just minor changes, they're more color correction than anything. If Camera Raw doesn't automatically open, you can change that in your preferences or just push Command Shift A to open it at the very beginning. Once it's here, I'm going to go and cut out every single piece again digitally. Once you brought that into Photoshop, click the quick selection tool. I find this the most useful when first making a piece. If you go to the top, it says select subject. If you have a person, it will select the entire person very easily and then you just copy paste to a new layer. If you have just a square that you're looking to grab, it's super easy. Just grab the rectangle marquee tool and you can just copy and paste it to a new layer. I watch a lot of processes online for digital uh, collage artists and I see a lot of them using the magnetic lasso tool. I do think that this one's good for some things, like if you have a building, for example, with very straight lines, it'll help grab them nice and carefully. But I don't find it to be my favorite, it just it's a personal preference thing for sure. I would rather use the quick selection tool, I think it works way easier. Um, but play around with what you like and everyone is different with their preferences, there's not one process for sure. I then copy it and put it on a new layer. 
This can take just as long as cutting it out by hand sometimes, honestly, especially the black and white ones. I find programs don't really know how to work with black and white photos as much, for good reason. They've never been trained on black and white the same way that they've been trained on color. For our challenges, sometimes I do take some digital liberties. So for example, these fish uh, are just a little bit too big in real life, so I'm going to shrink them down slightly. Once I've cut out all the pieces, I try to rearrange it as close to the original as possible. Before finishing a piece, I'll always take the piece and take a photo of it exactly the way I want it to be. That way when I'm digitally doing it, I can look back on that as a photo reference and make sure that it is exactly the way I wanted it to be. If I've made any mistakes with the cutting, I'll go back and fix it here. And otherwise I'm just kind of cutting out the pieces that I need. I then always add a layer at the back and just make it white. And then I'm ready to export. When I'm exporting for web and uh, social media platforms, I don't want these photos to be massive. So I save them to a smaller size. After you're done kind of doing that, I would keep it to the largest size possible and then save it to a working file folder. This way, if I ever wanna grab some of these pieces, they're just ready to go. And if I want to alter the piece in any way, like add a new background, maybe I was doing it in person and found something that I like better, that way I can just scan that new piece in and add it to the piece. If I want it to be a print file, I will simply make the background white part the size to the paper that I want to use. So for most of my prints, they're 12 by 16 or eight and a half by 11 with a eight by 10 print area. At this point is when I can alter the size of the piece. So I can scale it up or scale it down if it needs to fit at a certain size. Now at this point you're ready to post basically, whether it's to your new portfolio website or on Instagram. I'm quickly just gonna plug my website as well. I'd love for you to go check it out. I just launched it and I'm sure there's spelling mistakes somewhere or whatever. <laughs> I would love some feedback on it. I have all the pieces that I've scanned and ed edited onto my website in a portfolio page. But then I also use these photos for the product listings. That way people get a better sense of what the art looks like not in a frame. The brain likes to imagine things and free mockups are a great way to do that if you have your own website. If you know how to use Photoshop and you've made it this far through Photoshop, then you 100% can do this. Go check out free templates online for mockups. I think Mockup World is a great one. And I just download them and then put the art into the frames. If you're posting your art on social media or a website, I just think this is a great way to diversify your posts. People can see that your work is not just art, it's on the walls, it's professional. If you've gotten this far, I'm so proud of you. If you haven't used Photoshop before and you're just playing around in it, uh, it does take a long time to get used to. I've been using it now for almost 15 years, which is just crazy to think. I had CS1 on a big uh, monitor back in the day. I was lucky that I found interest in this really early, but it is something that you can do on your own. Now, I hope I covered everything, but if I missed anything, please comment below any questions. I'd be more than happy to answer them. Even if you're not ready to share it with the world, maybe you can share it with your friends and family. And now you know at least the process, maybe you could print out your own art in your own home. So with that, thank you so much for watching. Please like, subscribe, and hit that notification button for my channel. Let me know in the comments what I can teach you. I'll see you soon.